Hey, Rod here, the East Coast Lumberjack, and uh, finally we're doing part four of our four-part series on the best handle wood. Um, the first three, we basically talked about how a tree grows. So trees grow from the uh, bark or within the cambium. They put bark on the outside of the cambium, they put wood on the inside, and as I've said before in a few of my other videos, bark doesn't lie. If you have a, a, a problem in the wood, in its growth, if it's covering a, a, a knot or something like that, You'll see that on the outside in the bark, little abnormalities in the bark, and you'll also, it'll happen when you actually split into the wood and you'll see what's going on in, inside of it. The other thing we said as well is that uh, there's two types of hardwood. There's diffuse porous hardwoods and ring porous hardwoods. And ring porous hardwoods put on a lot of little hollow straws or vessels in the early wood, which gives it really good shock absorbing qualities. So ring porous wood is typically a lot better for tools that strike other objects, so such as our axe handles. Um, the other thing we found out as well is that uh, how a tree grows, how fast it puts these rings of growth on every year, uh, determines a lot how many of the cells in the wood have thicker late wood cells versus early, uh, thinner early wood cells. So we've covered all that in the last three videos. If you haven't seen them yet, I encourage you to, uh, to go and watch them. I also encourage you to subscribe to my channel and I'll continue to post uh, videos like these that may be able to help you as far as uh, we're gonna do a bunch more on uh, how to remove uh, ax heads, uh, take uh, handles out in one piece or, uh, or not. Um, also how to hang an ax properly. Um, we'll go over some other videos on uh, chopping wood um, which I've done for years. I've been a, a lumberjack for uh, over 30 plus years now and I'll give you a little bit of tidbits on what I know about that. So this is the grand finale. This, this uh, video here is about what wood is stronger. Do we make grain go with the eye or grain across the eye? And again it's been debated online a ton. It was debated even in our, in our lumberjack world back when we used to compete. I know that uh, a really good French buddy of mine, uh, Marc Rossier. I had a lot of respect for him, really great competitor. Um, he was from uh, the Gaspé Peninsula and he swore that uh, you should put your grain across the eye because it absorbed more shock, which does make sense if you think about it. There's more, you'd actually have more rings uh, than if it's stacked the opposite way to actually absorb shock. Um, so that makes, that makes some sense, but of course we want to know, you know, where's the strongest wood? Like where will all the handles perform the best? So to answer that, it just so happens, of course, I'm here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Graduated as a forester from the University of New Brunswick back in 1990. And uh, the University of New Brunswick actually has a wood science and technology center, a research center, at the Hugh John Fleming Forestry Center where I worked for most of my career. Uh, I knew some of the guys there. I knew... Uh, Dean McCarthy, who actually runs it and does a lot of the testing there, and I thought, hey, what a great opportunity right here in my backyard to do the ultimate test on axe handles. So what I did is I took, I made axe handles. I made handles with the grain stacked this way, the length of the eye, which is what I normally do, um, versus uh, grain stacked the opposite way across the eye. Okay, so I made five handles. And I took them in to the UNB and I said, listen guys, I want these tested. So what, I, what they did is they clamped the handle in their machine and they applied pressure here. Okay, so right where you would typically strike the ax. Okay, so all the pressure was here at the eye, holding it here. And what they did is they just kept gradually applying pressure until the handle broke. Now I know the only thing about that, it's a little bit different than us striking it all the time. But it's as close as we can come in a laboratory setting to try to find out, okay, which which way is it stronger. So that's what we did. So I want to show you the pictures of the, of the axe handles. This is handle number one. And you can see here the grain going across the eye. Okay, so that's grain across the eye was handle one. Um, handle two is grain going with the eye. Okay, you can see here the grain going with the eye, so lengthwise. Handle three, again, across the eye. You can see here there's lots of late wood in this one. So this, you would expect this handle to be the strong, uh, you know, quite strong. Um, number four, okay, again, this, this here one had the widest grain. So you would expect this handle here, you know, if our hypothesis was right, would expect this handle to be the strongest. 
the way we, we uh, I've talked about wood and the way the books are written. And look at number five. This one here has the most rings per square in, or per inch. Okay, so they're stacked really tightly. There's 21 growth rings there uh, going lengthwise. So handle five, we would, we would expect to be the weakest. The other thing I did as well is two of the handles, handles two and three, are uh, very close. So this handle here and this handle here, as far as growth rings per square uh, per inch, are almost identical. Okay, so, and one goes across the eye, one goes with the eye. So we've got a number of tests that we could do when we sent these handles in. So again, what they did, they kept putting uh, axial force on the handle until it ruptured, okay, to determine strength. Here's one of the printouts from the graph. Um, so this here shows the uh, continual increase in newtons of pressure until the actual, the handle broke, okay? So I summarized all of those, and I want to do that for you here now. I've done it several ways. I did it per handle, and then, of course, I lumped the handles uh, across the grain and with the grain. Um, and the other thing I would actually like to point out is the handles with more, uh, a higher number of uh, growth rings per inch, I put those in the with the eye, okay? So I gave across the eye as much advantage as I could. The, the two handles that had actually the, the highest number of um, rings per inch are in the cross eye category. So how did they stack up? Well, let's look at it here. If we look at the uh, number of growth rings, okay, so handle one had 10.4 um, rings per inch, handle three had 7.2, so those are the two with the cross eye grain, okay, so 10.4 and 7.2. Handle two had seven, so very close to handle, uh, handle one, uh, three seven grain uh, growth rings per inch. Handle four and five, that was the one that was the widest, and of course it's with the, uh, with the eye, and it, we'd expect that one to be the strongest. And then handle five is way out there, it's got uh, 21 um, rings per inch. So it's over twice what the weakest handle is cross grain. And then I lumped them, uh, I lumped them together. Again, I, I gr grouped the two cross eye. I grouped the two handles with eye grain that were uh, between seven and five rings per inch without the, the weak one. And then I put them all in together to say, okay, no holes barred, what's it look like? So the handle that had the, that had the, the weakest handle, the one that broke the earliest, was handle number one. Okay, that's with uh, grain going across the eye. And it only took about uh, 438 seconds until the handle ruptured. Most of the other handles, even the one with 21 growth rings per inch, grain running with the eye, they all took around uh, seven to eight hundred seconds until they actually ruptured. So almost twice the amount of time as handle number uh, one. As far as displacement, how far did they move until they broke? Um, again, handle one only moved about uh, 30 millimeters. All the rest of them were between 48 and 56 millimeters that they moved before they broke. So a little bit stronger handles for whatever the reason was. And then as far as the axial force, which is kilonewtons that it took to, to rupture them, the weakest was uh, handle number one. It only took 1.1 kilonewtons to rupture that handle. The rest of them were all around, um, actually, handle number five also, 1.1 kilonewtons to rupture it. And again, the grain was going with the eye. So even though it had double the amount of growth rings, which you'd expect it to be half as strong, when those growth rings went with the eye, it took the same amount. So all you had to do was change the orientation of the grain across the eye to with the eye, and it took the same amount of uh, kilonewtons to actually bust that handle, even though it should have been half as strong. Okay, so there's a lot of evidence here that running your, your grain with the eye is gonna make a stronger handle. So then what I did, I lumped them all together. So let's see what happens there. So on average, okay, on average, for grain across the eye, um, it took 20, the handles with grain with the eye, they, it took 27% uh, longer until those handles ruptured. And that this is including 
the 21 growth rings per inch. Okay, so this is including what should have been the really weak handle. They also were 27%, uh, uh, they took more displacement, so they actually moved 27% more before they broke and took almost 10% more force required to break them. Okay, so again, <clears throat> in my mind, when you look at that, even when we lump them together and do averages across, you know, the different varieties that you can get, the different variability that you can get, we see that the handles with grain running with the eye typically are stronger. It's, it's a stronger use of that wood to run your grain with the eye. So the other thing I did, remember we had two handles, numbers two and three, that were almost identical in growth rings uh, per inch. So as far as strength goes, they should have been fairly similar. One was oriented across the, the eye, the other with the eye. Which one outperformed the other? Well, in two of the three tests, grain with the eye was stronger. The only place it wasn't was uh, the amount of kilonewtons it took, and, they, and it was really, really close. But nonetheless, the one with the grain running with the eye broke. It took a little bit less force to break it. Um, but again, if you get right down to brass tacks and look at how many more rings per inch, um, technically, it actually was should have been a little bit weaker anyhow because there are it, one was uh, ten uh, seven point two rings per inch the other one was seven and of course uh, you'd expect the seven to be stronger um, although it wasn't when the grain was ac across the eye in two of the three tests it actually did pan out in the kilonewtons so <laughs> what's better grain across the eye or grain with the eye well in this one test that this lumberjack did on the east coast holding the handles in a device, applying pressure where you typically would get the pressure against the eye. Um, grain running with the eye outperforms grain running across the eye even when you have a lot more uh, rings per square inch. So I found that very interesting. The handle that I thought would have uh, performed the worst, which is the one with all the really tight growth rings, and I, I usually try to avoid, in all honesty guys, when I find that in a pile, and I know it's gonna to go to a competitor that's gonna be swinging a five pound razor blade, I won't use that tight grained wood because in my mind, I've always thought it's weaker wood, which is true. Um, however, if you put that grain and run it with the handle, it's every bit as strong as, as stronger handles with less growth rings that should have a lot stronger wood running across the eye. So I found that very interesting. The other thing, and again, this whole lumberjack has had to change his ways. I've sent out instructions to my uh, customers that have ordered axe handles from me. And way back in the day, I had a handle that had a lot of this, I call it white wood. It's that handle number, uh, I think it's handle number four. Yeah, right there. See that handle? And see, there's only about five growth rings in that whole handle. So the, the amount of late wood to early wood, the ratio of late wood to early wood is really high in that handle because there's so few, uh, so few growth rings. So there's not as much early wood. So you would think that that handle there would really be the strongest. And it was, in all my tests, the highest, uh, the most force it took, and the longest it took to break, um, and the farther it moved, the farthest distance it moved before it broke was all handle number four. So again, it outperformed by far. Um, but I remember I sold one of those handles to uh, another fellow lumberjack in the province, uh, great guy, Marcel, Dupu Marcel Dupuis, he's strong as an ox. And uh, I'm not sure what happened, but anyways, he brought the handle back to me and said, man, it broke right off the bat. And I thought then it was similar to, to early wood, um, similar to softwood species, sorry, in that, you know, the more, the, uh, the wider the growth rings, the weaker the wood. And I, I hadn't done a lot of research yet on hardwoods. And I'd even say in my instructions that I send out to guys in the East Coast Lumberjack instructions uh, when I send them out with handles, that those kind of handles are actually weaker. Well, guess what? My bad. It's actually stronger. The research shows it's stronger. Our data shows it's stronger. And of course, uh, it actually is a stronger wood. So even old dogs can learn new tricks. And this, uh, this test uh, bore that out. So again, I hope you found that interesting. A little bit more about wood, how to orient your handle. So of course, what I do at East Coast Lumberjack, and if you want to look at some of my other videos I've posted here, and, and actually I'm going to show you some. I should take you outside. I will take you outside right after this. But uh, that's why I split my handle wood out the way I do. I take my log, usually they're 12, 14 inches around. I'll split a pie shape out of that tree that, you know, I cut them three foot lengths and then I'll cut a pie shape out of that. And then I split off 
the outside sapwood. So that way it always ensures, and I do this all by hand at East Coast Lumberjack, it always ensures my grain is running with the eye. Okay. Now in the next few videos, I'm going to talk about run out because a lot of guys um, are concerned about run out. I want to give you a few tips on that. You know, when is it good? When is it not good? What should you look for if you're going to, if you're going to get a handle? And you get one with run out. When should you send it back and say, hey, man, this is a, this is a bum rap. You know, I want my money back. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of advice on that based on my 30-plus uh, years uh, messing around with axe handles. Um, but right now, I want to take out a little walk. Okay, so th this is inside my shop. And I've got some other cool, uh, here's some big machines from Germany. I just got them hooked up. Uh, you guys have seen the old uh, Dupla Carver over there. It's in behind that piece of cardboard. And here's another one, a Walker Turner bandsaw. Another really cool... Uh, Really cool machine. Let's go for a little walk here. I want to show you what I just brought home. My son and I just got back from a, a trip out to almost Montreal. So here we are in New Brunswick. We still have got a little bit of snow laying around. Uh, it got quite cold here the last few days. Now look at this. This is my project. So all the what I've talked to you about as far as splitting out wood, um, I'm going to do some more videos here with this stuff. So uh, I've got 13 logs here. They all came from uh, uh, Hardwood Mill up in Quebec. Um, man, <laughs> just about put me in the poorhouse getting this stuff home here. Uh, but anyways, it's, uh, it's, it's all over with now. But uh, again, last time I, I showed you this stuff, I showed you how wood like this here with uh, two to three inches of sap wood splits out really well. So, uh, and again, I talked to you about the bark. If you look along these trees, you'll see that the bark uh, runs straight down the runs straight down the tree. Okay, so all the stuff that I've been telling you is about that's what this. Now here's another one I want to show you. Is this is a new one for me? This is uh, called a, a smooth bark hickory. I've never played around with this here before. Okay, so I'm not sure how this is actually going to pan out. But I took a log. I, I took one of those as well just to say, hey, let's. Let's give it a try and see how it actually splits out and if it's any good for, for axe handles or not. So this is my job. I've got another big uh, load of ash inside the, uh, in Fredericton. I'll be bringing that out too. And so I'll be splitting all this stuff out over the next, uh, probably gonna take me a month or so to get this stuff done. But I'll, uh, I'll do a few videos up on it and show you how it's all splitting out and, and what to look for in that. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this series on what uh, Handlewood makes the, uh, the best handles. And uh, you've learned a, a thing or two from the old East Coast Lumberjack. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel. There'll be a lot more uh, good tidbits coming in the days to come. Thanks.